Hey up, it's Steve, that old Yorkshire geek, and a bit of Star Wars news, two lots of Star Wars news, I'm doing in one video, because I can't be bothered faffing about, because I'm lazy. So, two bits of Star Wars news that we're going to look at, one from Flickering Myth, and one from Screen Rant. Before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe, and share the videos, and drop a comment, hit the notification bell, if you're subscribed already. Also, follow the links in the description for various items, such as merch, uh, I'm wearing somebody else's merch today, so... Go follow Sci-Fi Quest as well. Go subscribe. Patreon, um, my books, other stuff like that. Right, here we go. As I said, this is from Flickering Myth. Uh, Star Wars Skeleton Crew uh, gets a new promo and filmmakers featurette. This is coming soon, isn't it? Starring Jude Law and various kids. Uh, with just under two weeks to go until Star Wars Skeleton Crew premieres on Disney+, Plus, a new TV spot has landed online for coming-of-age sci-fi series for the coming-of-age season, along with a featurette which sees filmmakers John Watts, Chris Ford, David Lowery, Jake Schreier and Bryce Dallas Howard discuss the next instalment in the Galaxy Far, Far Away drinking game. Coffee that hasn't gone cold yet. Amazing. Check them out below. And there's a post, a kind of a cool post, I must admit, I do like that. Uh, a Star Wars adventure. Not a Star Wars story, a Star Wars adventure. December 3rd. Right. Star Wars Skeleton Crew follows the journey of four kids who make a mysterious discovery on their seemingly safe home planet with suburbs, then get lost in a strange and dangerous galaxy. Find it. Does that just mean their own galaxy or they're going to another are they from a different galaxy i don't know finding their way home and meeting unlikely allies and enemies will be a greater adventure than they ever imagined the series stars jude law as jod na na wood or na na wood weird even for a star wars name that's weird isn't it ravi cabo conyers which would, would just that would just work as a Star Wars name by itself, wouldn't it? Uh, as Wim. Ryan Kira Armstrong as Fern. Kiriana Kratter as KB. Robert N Timothy Smith as Nee. The supporting cast includes Tunde Adbimpe, Kerry Condon, uh, Jaleel White, and Nick Frost as the voice of droid SM33. I bet they call him Smee from Peter Pan. Bet they do. Bet they do. And here's the um, the feet, the. the what they call it? What's my call? Te teaser. Uh, we'll have a listen, shall we? Sod it. We'll have a listen. I'm out to load it because it was really loud when I played it earlier on. I have watched it. It's not long. Let's say it's 30 seconds, 29. If you want to be anal about it. A crew of murderous pirates is coming. We have to hurry. <laughs> Are you listening to any of this? We're listening. Oh yeah. What did I just say? Are you listening to any of this? Let's go! We wanted to search the buffet! We're not searching the buffet! There you go. We're not searching the buffet! That kind of was a bit Michael Bay, wasn't it? That we got shouting and repeating what people have just said to you. Anyway, so there we go. We'll see, won't we? I'm, I'm reserving judgment. We'll see how it turns out. The kids look a bit annoying, to be completely honest. But. Uh, all kids are annoying. I hate kids. <laughs> How long does this go on for Filmmaker Roundtable? I'm not going to watch all of this because um, it's uh, 11 minutes. 11 minutes. So links for this is in the description so you can go and watch it yourself. I'm sure they're just congratulating, doing a lot of back back patting and, you know, aren't we cool? We got to work in the Star Wars universe again and all that stuff. And Bryce Dallas Howard looks astonishingly gorgeous there. Uh, with the flowing red locks. But anyway. Right. Oh, is that it? Oh, right. Oh. I thought there were more. <laughs> I thought there were more. So there we go. Uh, we'll have a listen to what they've got to say then, shall we? I'll skip it on a bit and we'll see what somebody's saying. Is it? And they were like, it's so good. <laughs> I was just like, oh, God, oh, that's so good. And so there was already, like, buzz on campus about it, <laughs> you know? It was a really easy... There was already buzz on campus. You got that. Um, Californian, <laughs> but I love Bryce Dallas Howard. Uh, she's lovely. She looks really lovely there. But yeah, it's all back patting and in that world. There's that sense of wanting to go on an adventure as a kid. But I think any, yeah. any, yeah. isn't it cool to to be able to work in the Star Wars universe and get paid for it? I bet they said that at some point. 
So there we go. So that's um, a little tease for Skeleton Crew. I'm hoping it's going to be fun. It looks as though it's going to be fun. But it's got kids in it and I don't like kids. <laughs> and I didn't like the Goonies film either. I'm one of those that didn't like the Goonies. Um, so I might not like this. It depends how annoying the kids are. If they're not super annoying, it might be fine. So we will see. But not long to go. December 3rd. Uh, I don't know what today's date is. 21st, isn't it? So yeah, a couple of weeks off, haven't we? Just under. Uh, oh, it says there. <laughs> right, so we'll move on to the other... Uh, news, uh, it's not news, but well it is, whatever, I don't know, from Screen Rant, uh, by the way, who wrote that other one, uh, Amy Cranswick wrote that one at Flickering Myth, now we're going over to Screen Rant, and was originally pitched as a five season story, which I've said for a long time, because uh, I read it somewhere, uh, so why are we only getting two, and there's uh, Cassie Nando and Thingamabob, um, um, I forgot his bloody name, that droid. Uh, Andor creator Thomas Bacon reporting. Uh, Andor creator Tony Gilroy confirms he originally pitched five seasons to Disney, but there's a good reason the story is wrapping up with Andor season two. Probably because not many people watched season one, even though it was really good, uh, but it was just it was a bit over long and stretched out. Hence the nickname and bar. But I did like it, and it was you know probably one of the better Star Wars series we've had. Anyway, excitement is building for Andor Season 2, recently revealed to be returning to Disney Plus on April 22nd, 2025. First footage from Andor Season 2 teases a story that's a little more interwoven into the timeline, and it's left many viewers eagerly wishing the show would have more than two seasons. Well, they're not going to, are they? Speaking in the latest issue of Empire Magazine, not if it's going straight into Rogue One, because then Cassie and Andor's story ends, spoilers, in Rogue One, uh, unless, as I've suggested, um, teleporters do exist in the Star Wars universe. You never know, they are, they are mentioned. So, maybe they do exist. Uh, same as cloaking devices are mentioned, but I don't think we've ever seen one of them, have we, in live-action Star Wars? I don't know if we've ever seen them in, like, Clone Wars or Rebels, I can't remember, but... Or the comics or novels, I don't know. But um, they are mentioned, but we've never seen one. Now, where were we? Speaking in the latest issue of Empire Magazine, creator and showrunner Tony Gilroy confirms his original grand concept for Andor was sold to Disney as five sprawling seasons, sprawling being the appropriate term, particularly for season one, each consisting of 12 episodes. He realised these dreams were unrealistic during production, though. Quote... Oh my God, we're going to have to come up with another 12 hours of story, he explained. Just for season two, if it were going to be five seasons, they were going to have to come up with another what's, what's, another 60 hours, wasn't it? Uh, no, another 48 hours for another four seasons, wasn't it? But anyway, whatever, he can't do his maths. Maths. Yeah, arithmetic. He explained, so I was already panicked. We already said we were going to do five years of timeline. That was the concept. How do you get out of that? Crunching four years into one. I don't think it worked out like that. I think, I reckon he probably had it plotted out because he's a clever fellow, his Tony, him and his, whoever he worked with. I think that they probably did do, what they call them, treatments. That's what I'm trying to say. They probably did treatments for each season. And maybe even with episode layouts what each episode we're going to do not the full stories but you know episode one we're going to do this episode two we want this you know by the end of the season we're going to be there that's what i think they probably had it plotted out but disney saw that it didn't do well but they wanted it they wanted it to they were lucky i suppose in a way that they did get a season two so they said it's crunch it all into one season and you can have another season We'll give you another $200 million, because everything costs $200 million in America. Uh, not in America, in Hollywood, which is in America these days, it seems. And more. Where were we? Right. The solution, solution, came when he shared a drink of scotch with Star Diego Luna. We were figuring out how starred we were. We know what that means. We were with the concept that we'd never be able to do this for five years. As I said, I think they probably did have it worked out. More or less. More or less. Much in the same way that 
many years ago, I did um, a treatment. Actually, no, I wrote a full script for a pilot episode of uh, a, a Space 1999 remake, which I just called Moonbase Alpha, because it wasn't set in 1999. I think I set it in um, 2100. And I think I also did the script for episode one as well. Uh, but the rest of the season, I just did... The, I decided what the titles for each episode were going to be and did like a little synopsis for each episode. So basically I got season one planned out. Obviously nothing ever came of it. Uh, it's on my website, mercuryrappies.co.uk, if you want to go check it out. It's in there somewhere. Uh, it's rubbish, you know, cause I'm, I'm, I'm useless at stuff. But uh, it was just my little pet project that I did. Obviously nothing ever came of it, but because um, I'm not in the business. It was just a bit of fun. But uh, even me in my amateurish nonsense brain thought it'd be a good idea to plan out the entire season. And I bet that's what they did here. That's what I'm saying, anyway. That, and I'm, I'm going to die on that hill. Anyway, out of that desperation came It's a Life Raft, right? And our season two is split up into four three-episode blocks, each covering a concentrated period of Cassian Andor's life and the formation of the Rebel Alliance. Each block is set roughly a year after the last, until the show ends as a direct prequel to Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Right, anyway, we've got some pictures to look at. Oh, these will be from season one, won't they? Well, that's the poster. There's What's-His-Face. I can't remember the names. <laughs> I did enjoy the show, but I can't remember the bloody names of the people in it. Uh, but he was a baddie. Is it, I, I still think he's going to turn good at the end. Uh, not good. You know what I mean? He's going to do something that helps the rebels by the end. That's what I think. I don't know. Because I think he's going to get spurned by another character that might be coming up in a picture. But uh, there's Bix Killeen. I remember her name because she's hot. And there's Mon Mothma. And I can't remember his name. Stella Skarsgård's character. We had his, he had his spaceship with the lightsabers on, didn't he? Which were cool. But a lot of people kind of said, that's a bit silly. And there's Cassian. Am I missing that exam? The fella that, that we saw earlier, whose name I can't remember, I know I'm useless. She's called Denise Goff. I can't remember the name of her character either. But she's a proper baddie. She's with the Imperial Intelligence Service, or whatever the hell it's called. And I, he, 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 he's, you can tell he's in love with her. And I think she's going to spurn him and he's going to do something, you know, to get at her that helps the rebels. That's what I think, anyway. So there. Oh, and there's Harry Potter's aunt. Who was supposed to... She was supposed to say the first F-bomb. Uh, it's supposed to like F the Empire or something like that in season one. But uh, they cut it out. And she died. I can't remember her name either, but she's a goodie. And then, oh, I think this might have been where she was supposed to say F the Empire in that hologram. People shouting. We're back at the beginning again. Yes, we are. Right. It's clearly disappointing that we're not going to get more than two seasons of Andor. This really is Star Wars' best live-action TV show. Well, it's up there, isn't it? It and The Mandalorian are the two best live action by a long way. If you discount Mandalorian Season 3, which I didn't... I didn't hate it. A lot of people hated like, uh, Mandalorian Season 3, but, I did, but it, it wasn't as good as Seasons 1 and 2, was it? Uh, by a long way. And the characters are so wonderfully rich, they could easily be explored for decades to come. That said, Gilroy's probably right that an ongoing multi-season TV show was almost impossible. Andor is Star Wars' most expensive TV show. If they say so, I don't know. I've not. I don't know. I know they did spend a lot on season one because they used a lot of, you know, actual sets. They didn't use the volume and that. They actually went places, filmed on location, built big sets and stuff like that, didn't they? Anyway, and its lavish beauty is a direct result of intense care and concern over production. It's grown-up Star Wars. That's what Andor is. It's not for kids. Skeleton Crew is going to be a kid's Star Wars, isn't it? Andor was Star Wars for grown-ups. So there we go. The entire team would burn out. No, they won't. No, they won't. TV. Well, maybe the Disney ones. Would, Disney doesn't know how to make TV shows, does it? But, you know, a proper TV crew, they'd be able to handle whatever that is thrown at them wouldn't they? Because that's what they do. Gilroy's approach may mean the story wraps up in Andor Season 2, but it actually has a huge advantage for Lucasfilm. I wouldn't say it wraps up, it, it leads into Rogue One, doesn't it? So I, get, I, I bet it ends where they'll get the order to find Jyn Erso and he, he's got to go to the rings of, what's the McCauley? That place that's two asteroids stuck together where he meets Daniel May's character. 
because it's about the information about the the um, super weapon, which they don't know what it is, the Death Star. But they get you know, he's got information for that. That's how it'll end, I think. But anyway. Gilrod's approach may mean the story wraps up in Andor Season 2, but it actually has huge advantages for Lucasfilm. It means there will be so many other potential stories that can be told. Star Wars is well known for hopping around the timeline and bringing back some of the best characters time and again. Andor Season 2 features Ben Mendelsohn reprising his popular role from Rogue One. I'm not going to say the rest. For example, there's absolutely no reason Andor should be the last we've seen of the show's characters. Well, no, it depends, doesn't it, how successful it is, how well it does. But they don't seem to care how well things do, do they, to be honest? As long as the money's coming in from the subscriptions, that's all they're bothered about, isn't it? We all know of TV shows that have outstayed their welcome, starting off strong, but losing momentum and burning out. And our season one launched viewers on an intense journey, one that simply can't be sustained forever. Only five seasons, for Christ's sake. It's not like Bloody Supernatural. It wasn't going to go over like 15 seasons, was it? Anyway, that said, I'm glad the I'm glad the compressing four years into one season. To be completely honest, uh, get it over with. It should be a bit more exciting, at least. And as good as Andor is, it's better that the show ends when its team feel they've told their story, uh, rather than simply carrying on for five seasons. It means we're in for a second season that should be just as good as the first. Oh, excuse me, if not better that we'll end on a high note, not a disappointment. Source Empire Magazine. There we go. So there we go. I'm looking forward to Andor Season 2. Was it April next year it's coming? I'm looking forward to that. And I hope it's super exciting. And um, we see lots of... I hope we see lots of space battles at least. Uh, well, not lots of, but, you know, several. Because that's what we wanted Star Wars, isn't it? We're going to see the setting up of Yavin 4. I think that's already been mentioned. At D23 in Brazil, they had that cardboard cutout, didn't they, of Cassian Andor. And it, it were obvious, you know, he were in front of the uh, the rebel base on Yavin 4. Are they going to go back to Guatemala to film it? Probably not. It'll be on the volume, won't it, that, I, I imagine. But you never know, they might have built an actual set. It's Tony Gilroy, after all. But you never know. Right, so there we go. Uh, looking forward to that. Looking forward to Season 2. See how it leads into Rogue One. As I said, I think it'll just end with Glenn with them getting the order to find uh, Jin Erso, who'll try and get, who's, who's going to try and find uh, a dad, Gail and Erso, because they know that he's behind, he's supervising or whatever, or he's the lead scientist in charge of this uh, super weapon. Because season one ended, didn't it, with them um, showing what the, the parts that they were building in the the prison planet. Uh, they were building turned out they were building parts for the Death Star. Everybody said that, didn't they? Uh, well, I did anyway. But uh, other people say, oh, no, they're building other things. No, they're building parts for the Death Star. It's obvious, isn't it? Anyway. So there we go. Look forward to that. Right. Right, we'll leave it there. So, as I said earlier, don't forget to like and subscribe, share the videos, drop a comment, tell me how stupid I am, etc. And all that jazz. Explore the description for all those links for me books and stuff and merch and Patreon. Uh, become a member. Become a member. Do all that as well, which will help. And I'm erring again. <laughs> I'm going to try and edit out as many errs as possible. You're not going to, Well, I'll leave this bit in, but all the rest you're not going to... You'll say, why is he saying that? There's not that many erms in it. There was. Not anymore. Um, That was a deliberate one. <laughs> Right, so we'll leave it there. So, thanks for watching, wherever you are. Look after each other, and until next time, I'll see you there.